Hi guys, so this is the second Voronoi Diagram lesson and I've titled it Voronoi Diagram Questions because I'm going to go through three different questions that you could be asked in your exam. Now obviously they can ask many different questions in many different ways but I think if you know how to do these three plus you understand my previous lesson um, then you should be pretty good with this topic. Now first first type of question is they give you an incomplete Voronoi diagram and they say well here's points A, B, C, D and E and it says find the equation of the line so we're looking for the equation of a line which would complete the Voronoi cell containing site E so we're looking at this this cell E is the site but it's incomplete now what that means is they've drawn look they've drawn the perpendicular bisector of E and D. Look, that line bisects E, D. They've also drawn the perpendicular bisector of E and B. There. And they've drawn the perpendicular bisector of C and E here. What they haven't drawn is the perpendicular bisector of E and A. So we're looking for the equation of this line. Now I'm going to draw the line um this will not be perfectly accurate at all but i just want to kind of show you what we the kind of thing we're trying to get so we're trying to get the equation of this line the line that is going through the midpoint of those of a and e so let's say it's somewhere around there Okay, so we're trying to find that, and now that completes this cell. So now E, this is the cell in which E lies. Okay, how do we find the equation of that line? Well, we've now basically changed this question into a equation of a perpendicular bisector question. And we've done that, well, certainly I've done it in a previous lesson, so we should know how to do it. What do I need? Well, I need three things. I need a point, I need a point, I need a gradient, and I need a formula. Okay, let's start with the point. How do I find the point? Well, the point I'm looking for is the midpoint, the midpoint of A and E. So what I'm going to do is, well, I have look, I haven't put any of the formulae here. If you don't know these formulae, fine, but know where they are in the formula booklet. The midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. Now I like to I like to write what is x1 and what is what x2, y1, y, and y2. So we're looking at the midpoint of A and E. So A is going to be x1, y1, and E is going to be x2, y2. It, it, if, it, didn't, it doesn't matter if you want to make this x2, y2 and this x1, y1. That would also work. Sub in my values. 2 plus 6 over 2. Um, let me do that in blue. So we have 2 plus 6 over 2, comma, 1 plus 5 over 2, which is 8 over 2, 4, and 6 over 2, 3. So it's 4, 3, and that is my point. And is this midpoint in around 4, 3? Well, yeah, that's pretty accurate to 4, 3. Next thing I need is my gradient. Now, how do I find the gradient of that pink line? Well, I first have to find the gradient of A, E. So be careful, when I use this formula, which is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, this is gonna give me the gradient of this line, A, E. And then I have to do that thing where I flip and change the sign to give me the gradient of the pink line. So Y2 is five, so it's five minus one, over six minus two, which equals, actually that's four over four, which is one. So the gradient of AE is one, so the gradient of 
the perpendicular bisector is I need to flip and change the sign. Well, it's 1 over 1 becomes 1 over 1, obviously, and then just make it negative. So the, the perpendicular gradient is negative 1. Finally, I sub it into the formula. Now, my preferred gradient of a line formula, as you know, probably at this stage, is y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. But be careful, your x1, y1 is now not this. It's not a because I'm finding the line that goes through this point, the midpoint. So my new x1, y1 is this. That's the whole point of finding this line, or this point. So x1, y1. So now I'm going to have y minus 3 equals m, which is negative 1, into x minus 4. I could leave it like that. It didn't tell me to give it in a particular form. I think just for fun, I'm going to put it in y equals mx plus c. So now multiply this out. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 4 is plus 4. And then just add 3. So it's negative x. 4 plus 3 is 7 plus 7. Does that equation look like this pink line? Well, yes, because it goes through 7. And the gradient does look approximately like negative 1. But again, remember, I never said this line was perfectly accurate. I just wanted to get an idea of what we were doing. OK, so that's what he was looking for. I'm going to underline this just to be clear. That's your final answer. y equals negative x plus 7. OK, that's the first question. Second question you'll be glad to know is pretty straightforward. It says, state the site that is closest to the point 10, 2. So my point 10, 2 is here, 10, 2, there. So which site is closest to that green point? Well, the sites are A, B, C, and D. And this is just testing that you understand how the whole Voronoi diagrams work. It is in this cell or this region, which means its closest site is D. So all I have to do is write down D. Obviously, if it was here, it would be C, here it would be B, and anywhere here, it would be A. So that was an easy one. Last question. Not necessarily an easy question, but hopefully it'll make sense. So this is the toxic waste dump problem. It says, a town in the countryside has houses at points A to J. So that's all the blue points. All those blue points are houses in some country town. So they're actually, and let's say this is, these are in kilometers. So they're quite spread out. They're like two kilometers between each house. And the council wants to build a toxic waste dump at either point L or K. That's the red points here. And they want to choose a point that is furthest away from any house. So obviously, if you live here, you do not want them to build the, the dump here. And if you live over this side, you do not want them to build the dump over there. So they want to, do, they want to figure out well, which is the which place, which of these K or L is furthest away from a house. Now, I mentioned in the last lesson that each vertex is the center, each vertex is the center of a circle that goes through the three closest points. So see, K is the center of this circle that goes through A, B, and C. And then L is the center. Now, I've obviously pre-made these, these circles here. They fit nicely. Um, L is the center of this circle that goes through E, G, and D. Now, you might look at them, and you could probably already figure out this is a bigger circle, which means these houses are further away, so sh they should probably build the dump at K. But just because it looks, just because the circle looks bigger, that doesn't... I haven't, pro I haven't proved that it is bigger or anything like that. And I don't even expect you to draw circles in your exam. I am just drawing the circles to illustrate exactly what we're trying to do. And what we're trying to do is find the distance from K to any one of these houses and the distance from L to any one of these houses or the radius of the circle. So if I can find AK, the length AK, and I can find the length L, 
um, D. I'm, I'm only cho I only chose A because th those numbers are the nicest numbers. Two two is pretty. Um, they're small numbers. And okay, thirteen two isn't ideal, but it's the best. I, I, d I definitely don't want to choose that one. But it doesn't matter. I could choose any of them. I will get the same. I will get the same distance. Um, so I'm going to find the distance a k. Now, the distance of a line formula is also in the formula booklet. Find it. It's x1 x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared or some form of this but that's it, this is basically Pythagoras's theorem. Um, and I just want to make sure what is okay I'm going to write out the points here a is 2 2 and k is 4.29, 3.55. I'm doing that because I always like to write x1, y1, and x2, y2. Now I sub this in here. Um, this will give me 2 minus 4.29, 2 minus 4.29 squared plus 2 minus 3.55 squared and that's all in a root. I'm definitely not going to do that uh, in my head. I'm going to use a calculator. So I'm going to do square root of 2 minus 2 minus 4.29 squared plus 2, don't forget any of your brackets or anything, 2 minus 3.55 squared. Answer is 2.76525. 2 2.76525. Okay, that's the radius of this circle. Now let's find LD. Or DL, it doesn't make a difference. Let's do DL equals... Um, I'm not going to write out the formula this time, but I am going to write D is 13.2 and L is 14.21, 4.22, I believe. And I'm going to write X1, Y1, and I'm going to write X2, Y2. Again, I always recommend doing that. So now I have my 13 minus 13 minus 14.21 squared plus 2 minus 4.22 squared. Again, calculator please. Square root of 13 minus 14.21 squared plus 2 minus 4.22 squared is 2.52834. 2 2.52834. Okay, therefore, as AK is bigger than DL, so again, if you understand what's going on, you can write it how I, I find if you fully understand what's going on in the question, you are you should be able to fully explain it to an examiner. So as AK is bigger than DL, um, they should build the dump at point K. And that's it. That's your three kind of questions on Voronoi diagrams. As I said, if you understand all those three questions, plus my previous lesson where it kind of explains the all the different terms and shows you how to create a Voronoi diagram, then you should definitely be pretty good uh, on this topic.